YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here. It is Throwback Thursday, and we're throwing back to Rome 2 today in a massive, huge 4v4 battle. This is on the largest unit settings, 4v4. So yes, this is going to be truly a large battle. We'll look at the total number of player or uh, units on the battlefield afterwards, but yeah, your standard unit size is the 160, so it's going to be huge. So we're going to have Dacia, Kush, Macedon, and um, oh, I think it's uh, the Mes or yeah, Mes Oof, I'm gonna get it wrong. It's either the Numidian. Uh, it's it's Massilia. I don't know. Hang on, that's the Greek one. <laughs> Crap. I think it's the Massazeli. So the Massazeli, the Numidian faction, the Massazeli. Um, over here we've got Swaby. They are rocking the Ariovistus general ability with a bunch of blood sworn. So I'm excited to see that. Um, and then we've got the Boei here with their sword followers and oath sworn levy freemen, the the most renowned unit in Rome 2 from way back in the day. Then we got the Romans over here. Holy auxiliaries! Look at this: three Syrian archers and three Balearic slingers. And the Romans have a bunch of legionary cohorts mixed in with the occasional armored legionary. And these armored legionaries just look absolutely. Amazing. Look at that Lorica Segmata. Quite a sight to behold. So, yep, Rome is going to be holding up one of the center positions. They do have a couple of Equites uh, behind either flank, Vigile in the back, and then on the far side we have Tylus over here. They've got a front line of Celtic Slingers who are going to be skirmishing ahead of some Levy Freemen, Oathsworn, and Tribal Warriors, along with some uh, Raiding Horsemen. Let's just kind of run through the other armies here. So, Heavy Spears. Noble swords and a couple of falcs and axemen, along with a few spear horsemen for Dacia. There are some Dacian heavy bowmen as well. And then for Kush, the front line is actually Kushite pikes. So this is actually going to work out really well for them to zone out the Roman infantry, which would otherwise probably defeat them heavily. So I like the pick of the pikes here, and pikes definitely a lot more relevant in the most recent patch as well. There are some slave slingers. Behind them, we've got the disciples. Of Apodimac? Apodimac? Yeah, I'm probably saying it wrong. But anyway, these lion hide clad soldiers pack a huge charge. Massive melee attack. Limited damage for their weapon. But they have a lot of health. And, like, again, on the charge, they are just gruesome. It's a couple of armored desert cav and a Kushite royal guard. It's gonna be some desert chariots. For Macedon, we actually have a proper pike line flanked by Thorax swords. And it's gonna be supported by Cretan archers. And, uh, or Rhodian Slingers, one of the two, actually I think those are just Macedonian Slingers, are they not? Yeah, Macedonian Slingers. And then we've got some, uh, Mercenary Thracian Peltist back here, so, like that a lot. And then the Swaby are getting ready to, uh, counter-attack because some Thessalian cavalry here just laid waste to their cheap spearmen. So here comes the Noble Riders trying to right that wrong. I'll let you see the overall position of the battlefield, so Swaby moving. Uh, everybody's moving to uh, attack the player in front of them because there's really not much maneuver room. <clears throat> Here you actually have the Kushite slave infantry move forward first, along with some cavalry. It's a good move. Romans not going to have, not that they have a high charge, but their high charge is going to be negated, and they're not able to throw their um, pila. You can see that the Kushite pikes now coming up to try and force back the Roman line, and if the Roman line doesn't fall back, it'll take massive damage, and then the disciples are being kept in the back lines. But um, the Romans can, I mean, they have their uh, maniples. They should be able to outmaneuver the pikes. Uh, right now, they're standing here in an engagement that they certainly don't want to be in. But you can see they're going to go ahead and fall back and use that maneuverability to their advantage. Over here, we've got an engagement coming between Tylus and Dacia. The Dacian noble swords and heavy spearmen are going to engage the tribal warriors and oathsworn of Tylus. It's going to be some real slugfest between some heavy infantry units over here while the Dacian bowmen should trade blows with the Celtic slingers pretty well. The spear horsemen are going to be uh, in a good position to keep the raiding horsemen from getting behind the lines. You can see that, interestingly enough, like if I take a... Uh, yeah, this game does have an overview. If you look at the overview, the Roman is having to fall back on their position, and it's creating a bulge in the lines right here. Um, so an interesting move by the uh, the Kush player, actually pushing back a much more powerful faction. 
So, and the Bowie I have moved to try and help. Uh, these disciples, look at that, already 108 kills. They've got Battle Rhythm and Frenzy. So, just an incredible amount of damage that this unit is causing. Up against some very tough units like an Oathsworn and a Legionary Cohort. And there's Sword Followers over here as well. So, yeah, the Romans have been completely disrupted by the Kush player. And that's allowing him to get in here. And you can see that that actually potentially opens up flanks back here as well. The Swaby player right now is kind of just being overwhelmed in a headlong fight. I guess that uh, maybe the fast charge didn't work out. Um, but the Swaby player being overwhelmed by the Masaisley here. You can see all of this armored desert cavalry pushing its way through the Swaby line. It's going to make way for the uh, Germanic Slingers. You can see that the Numidian Noble Infantry and the Desert Cohorts easily slugging it out with the Bloodsworn. And despite the help of the heavy melee cavalry from the, uh, the Bowie Eye, it's not going to be enough. The Bowie Eye did punch through, and they're going to get to these Tribal Slingers. Uh, but there's some Thessalian cavalry giving chase, and the Swaby Infantry is just straight up overmatched. And with this uh, armored cavalry now behind the line, the Germanic Scout Riders are also potentially in trouble. So the Swaby are being overrun. And then Macedon is just presenting its pike phalanx, I guess for show, to the Bowie Eye, who ha want nothing to do with this show. <laughs> They're just going to stand back and throw all their uh, javelins and pila and everything else they can. They even have their archers up front trading point-blank shots into the pikes, and that's not a bad idea. They really don't want to attack those pikes head-on. This foot companion caught a little bit of action earlier and already racked up 44 kills to no losses. So, do not attack Pikes head on in this patch. They actually do what they're supposed to do. So, you can see over here, this is definitely a heavyweight fight between Tylus and, uh, and Dacia. So, it is going to slug out for a while. All these Oath Sworn and Tribal Swords are using the defensive uh, formation here, the Shield Wall, which is going to increase their melee defense and make that fight drag out for quite a long time. You can see over here that it's just turned into an absolute mess between Rome and Kush, with the Kushite pikes following around, and then when these disciples are getting into combat, I mean, they are they are just causing some intense destruction. There's another one over here, 156 kills. I guess, you know, though, on this unit scale, it's it may not be that much, but I mean, they're up against armored legionaries and legionary cohorts. They are doing incredibly well, all things considered, and the Kush player isn't really winning, per se, in, you know, the fight here against Rome. But the damage they're causing is important, but there are still a ton of slingers back here. These desert chariots, though, have racked up a pretty fair number of kills here, too. Probably getting into all these uh, squishy skirmisher units back here. And now you can see that Dacia with its spear horseman starts to gain an advantage over the, uh, over the uh, Tylus player, who did not have the ability to keep his horses at bay. Once these gaps formed in the lines, the spear horses come through and start to clean things up. Definitely a tough fight, like I said, but Dacia kind of gaining the upper hand here, slowly but surely. There's even some noble swords that are now going to come over here and join um, against these legionary cohorts. The pikemen trying to get a few kills, but not getting much. You can see, as the pikemen were forced to break up, then the Romans prevailed. But again, these chariots, look at that, 181 kills and... Still just kind of roving their way through the battlefield here, with the potential to do a lot more damage. This Kushite Royal Guard has found a really nice target back here. Uh, gotten a hold of these Auxiliary Syrians, and they're holding them for the uh, chariots. Let's watch these Kushite Royal Guard and chariots combine to destroy some very expensive Roman Auxiliary auxiliary uh, units here. Look at that, 220 kills. Wow, that is just going to be insane. Absolutely insane. So the Boei trying to fight back against Macedon, but uh, Macedon should be in a good position to defend itself here. The Boei are going to have a hard time outflanking, especially um, since you kind of slowly have the uh, Masaisali wrapping up the infantry. There are some sword masters left. Surprised here though, they've still got some Germanic scout riders and other units roving around back here. So um, the Swaby ended up doing a lot more damage here than it may have initially looked like they would. These Germanic Slingers better watch it, too. They're about to walk into Pikemen. So, again, you can see the Boei just being zoned out. Slowly being zoned out of the fight. And the Roman has taken so much damage in this fight. Um, which is kind of incredible. I really, you know, hands off to the uh, the Kush player here. They've done a pretty awesome job. This, the Romans fighting the wrong way into these uh, Kushite Pikes. Being shot in the back. 
by all these Kush skirmishers and Dacian heavy bowmen. So the Roman cohort is going to take a savaging there. This royal guard has a ton of kills, and the chariot's now up to 362 kills. The Kush player uh, breaking apart a Roman army and more or less defeating them here is impressive in my mind. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I don't know the Kush faction well enough to know that maybe that's not a big deal, but it seems like a big deal to me. So the Desert Cohorts here wrapping up the final Oathsworn. Macedon just sitting back playing its skirmisher card. And they they definitely have great skirmishers here. And uh, Germa, uh, uh, the Swabi, Swabi have these Germanic Slingers. But uh, they're all about to get ready. Oh my gosh, the kills on these chariots. These guys might break 500. The Kushite chariots are just on an absolute tear. And there's some mercenary Falx warriors back here as well. <laughs> that is incredible. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I love it. They're on a tear. And look at the Macedonian here just using the pikes to continue to push back on the Boei. They haven't even had, like, their area denial, I guess, is really actually working, working well here. The Kush player has essentially finished the Romans, and the Dacian player has finished off um, uh, the armies of Tylus. And now the final few troops for the opposing team melt away here as the chariots soared up to 580 kills in a final charge on the poor fleeing Boei troops. <laughs> what an epic battle for Throwback Thursday. Thank you so much uh, for sending this in. This was fantastic, and I hope you all enjoyed it. This was a huge battle and huge settings. And it was a lot of fun to watch. Just look at this. 585 kills on the Desert Chariots. Oh, there's another Chariot unit, too, that I didn't catch. That had 238. So the Kush picking up some incredible kills in these units. These Disciples picking up quite a few kills, too. A couple of the Pikemans getting engaged in the action eventually. Um, and if we take a look for the, um, the Gete, I was calling them Dacia the whole time. But, yeah, same thing. I'm thinking Rome 1. But, yeah, Gete... Uh, so, wow, these Dacian heavy bowmen did some work. And Noble Swords, no surprise. Um, getting a decent chunk of kills in there as well. But some of the heavy heavy spears performing relatively well. Tribal Warriors are more of a defensive than an offensive unit. So not terribly surprised not to see most of the kills there. But really seeing those kills on the Oathsworn who put up a tremendous fight um, against the Gete. Uh, let's take a look here at the... Macedonian player who managed to get some uh, respectable kills on these light Thessalian cavalry. And then uh, the mercenary Thracian pelt is getting a little bit of action there too. Look at the Falx warriors, or the Thracian warriors here. Falx armed, of course, but again, nice, nice kills. The thorax swords appear to be the ones who were engaged most of the time, but the pike line just being used to zone out an enemy. And here for the Mesesali, um, yeah, I mean, the Mesesali, the legionaries just engaging the Germanians head on. Uh, Germanians, man, I got Rome 1 on the mind, the Sawabi. So engaging the Sawabi head on. And let's see here Swordmasters, you know, decentish number of kills. Berserkers uh, for their unit size, again, not bad. Some of the Bloodsworn got a few kills, but I mean, overall, the uh, Sawabi infantry just got shut down by this armored infantry line from the Mesesali. So pretty cool line there. Let's uh, check out the Bowie here. They weren't able to do a whole lot. Their Oathsworn General got a few kills, but, I mean, they were struggling to do anything to that Macedonian pike line. They just didn't have a great answer for it at the moment. And then Rome pushed back, and their infantry kind of forced apart. And interestingly enough, when that fight broke apart, I really thought it was going to favor Rome, but uh, the chariots and the cavalry and other units just actually broke the Romans up, and it's kind of interesting that a pike line in a single formation is what caused the Romans to break up, but then they just got picked off and destroyed, but uh, great, great game from all the players. Really enjoyed that one. Thank you very much for sending it in. Hope you enjoyed your Throwback Thursday battle. Also, make you sure you join in to the Rome 2 live stream. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I will be back next Thursday with some more Throwback. What do you want to see then? Is it more Rome 2? Is it Shogun 2? Is it Attila? What do we want? Tell me, and if you have a replay to submit for it, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I may hop into the Discord and try and play some of this with you all. I will see you then.